Anime Aquash, killed by a 32 caliber bullet to the back of the head. Her frozen body was found on a ranch on the outskirts of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. It was the winter of 1976. Her murder has remained hidden in layers of secrecy, lies and controversy for the last 28 years. It hurts. It really, it's a very deep hurt. John Graham, the man who has been labeled her killer, is now facing the biggest battle of his life. He says he's innocent, but the U.S. says he's guilty and wants to extradite him from Canada. I wasn't involved in anime's death. I was not involved in anime's death at all. The woman he stands accused of murdering was no ordinary Indian. Anime was a prominent figure in the militant American Indian movement. It's no longer about anime Ashquash. It's now about AIM. It's now about the FBI. It's now about the U.S. government. It's now about the Canadian government. From what I've seen, from the information that's been provided to me, Mr. Graham is being scapegoated on this. Did the movement kill one of its own, or is Anime a victim of corrupt, even murderous federal law enforcement? They create a lie. They manufacture truth, if you want to call it that. John Graham has made bail. He walks out of jail into the security of family, friends and supporters as a free man. It is good to be out. On December 1st, 2003, John Graham was picked up by the Vancouver Police Department and arrested in connection with the murder of AIM activist Anna Mae Aquash. The state is going to come up with their case and uh, we're going to put, it to put our defense together and uh, we're, we're going to fight this to the end. I was going to ask, are you yeah. prepared to fight now? Oh yeah, we're going to fight this to the end. Yeah, this is not going to go over and they're not going to pull another Peltier case on us. No, we're going to go with the ballots. It's all a test. It's all a test. Graham knows his taste of freedom may be cut short. He's a wanted man across the U.S. border. And he says the FBI will do anything to get him into court. Well... The way it's come to me, the way they're telling me is that my name keeps coming up. I was here and I was there and I was, you know, everywhere with some, with some movement and around where anime was and, and uh, well, and I traveled with her. And I guess because of that, I, I become the most likely target of this, this whole thing. One of Canada's top lawyers, Terry La Liberté, is defending Graham. There isn't one bit of forensic evidence. These are people that are, um, who have their own access to grind, etc., have changed the testimony over the years, and it seems that's the type of evidence they're relying upon. When machine gun toting American Indian movement militants took over Wounded Knee in 1973, the eyes of the world focused on the tiny Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota and the tense 71-day standoff with federal agents. Anime Aquash was one of them. Tired of the way Indians were being treated by the U.S. government, Anime and many other young Native men and women joined the movement to protest the injustices, violations of treaties, and the repression of their people. John also got caught up in it all. I was in a, on a quest, I guess, in my own, and just learning the truth and the histories of our people, you know. In the early 70s, John Graham was a young, impressionable man. I guess in our own, for our own reasons, you know, joined in this movement. But uh, our own reasons and our own experiences, I guess, brought us into that, to that point where we, you know, we got involved with this movement, this political movement. Graham was born into a southern Toshone family from the Champaign Asiac First Nation in the southern Yukon. Like many of his generation, he was raised in foster care homes, away from his family, language and culture. He credits AIM for awakening his desire to find his Aboriginal identity. Anime, a, you know, very close and dear friend of mine, my sister, in, a lot, in more ways than, you know, people can know. We traveled together uh, years ago. It was more like a war zone on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in the 1970s. 
In the period of two years from 1973 to 1975, over 60 people were killed, their deaths still unresolved. But the incident at Oglala became a turning point for the American Indian movement. On June 25, 1975, heavily armed law enforcement surrounded the Jumping Bull compound after two FBI agents were gunned down in a gunfire between AIM and government agents. Special Agent Ron Williams and Jack Kohler were shot and killed. AIM lost Joe Stunts in the shootout. When I walked out, I saw two FBI agents standing there with the M16s, and they shot That was Anna May describing what it was like on Pine Ridge after the shootout. She and John Graham returned to the reserve to help AIM members escape. Six months later, she would be dead. During that time, she was killed. She was being hunted by the FBI. She was being hunted by particular agents within the FBI. And she was in fear for her life. John is convinced she was killed by the U.S. government. And why do you think they wanted her dead? Because she wouldn't cooperate with them in giving them names as to people who were in or around the Oglala shootout. She wouldn't cooperate because she wasn't there. She couldn't say who was there or who wasn't there. She didn't have that information. But they believed because she was close to leadership, that she did, and that she was there, but she wasn't there. Some speculated Aquash was killed by AIM members because she knew some were government spies. Others said she was killed because Aquash herself was an informant. Graham says over the past decade, members of the FBI have made four trips to the Yukon to visit him, asking him to identify Anime's murderer and offering him immunity from any related charges. And it was then that, you know, a lot, uh, everything's changed. Every, you know, they told me then I uh, cooperate with them or are they going to wreck my life? And they pretty much lived up to their word. They said, I cooperate with them or else, you know, I'm going to take the charges. No. I, I can't do that because it never happened. And there's, I can't testify to something that they're telling me to testify, you know. Graham is not the only man charged in Anime's death. Coming up on First Story, the verdict on this man and what it may mean for John Graham. In the spring of 2003, Arlo Looking Cloud was picked up on the streets of Denver, Colorado. He confessed to the murder of Anna Mae on videotape while under the influence of alcohol. He said he was at the scene of the crime, but says John Graham was the trigger man. A seven-man and five-woman jury found Arlo Looking Cloud guilty of aiding and abetting to murder on February 9th. The jury deliberated for seven hours after hearing four days of testimony from former A members and people who knew Anna Mae. He was convicted without any physical evidence. The prosecution argued that Looking Cloud and Graham, acting on orders from AIM leadership, took Aquash from Denver to Pine Ridge, where Graham shot her in the head. Yes, I did travel from Denver to Pine Ridge with Anna Mae. I, you know, and I let her off at a safe house there. And that was the last time I've seen her. Okay? And I, it's, I don't know what happened. Somebody from AIM leadership gave you the order to shoot That never happened. Me. That never happened. No. So where would something like that come from? From the FBI. You know, again, look at the records. Look at the records. The FBI started this rumor within days of Anna May's them finding her body. Within days, or within a period of Two weeks there, the FBI started this rumor and it's mushroomed since then. But former AIM member Russell Means believes someone in AIM leadership gave the orders. He spoke after the Arlo Looking Cloud verdict. We have to go after those leaders in our movement who are responsible. And we have to get an appeals attorney, a top-notch appeals attorney, for this poor, gentle soul who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Natives are clashing over these questions in newspaper and magazine articles, in television interviews, on the web and in court. And this is our right as Canadian citizens to know what happened to Anime Picto Aquash. 
why she was murdered and why it has remained unresolved for 23 years. For Denise and Deborah Maloney Pictou, they do believe AIM was involved in their mother's murder. The daughters have refused to comment on the case, but have allowed Nova Scotia lawyer and family friend Tuma Young to speak on their behalf. Um, what they really are seeking is justice and answers to their question. What really happened 27 years ago? There's some haywire group of people have been sending me letters purporting uh, to represent all the Aboriginal women. And uh, they have no mandate to do this, but they're challenging us on the evidence and, and suggesting that somehow there is forensic evidence. There's certainly a bullet found in the body, but there's nothing to link that bullet to my client, nothing to link a gun to my client, nothing in terms of DNA, uh, uh, fingerprint, anything, the type of things that we usually like to see. I know John is, is not guilty of this, this charge. It's because I know John. That's, you know, every, there's a lot of people that feel that way because they know him. It's just as simple as that. Yukon recording artist Matthew Lien is the president of the John Graham Defense Committee. If the truth does come out of this, you will even feel that this was worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, we'll make it good. You know. Lien has been a personal friend of Graham's for 20 years. He believes the evidence is just not there to prove Graham is guilty. If you want to look at the factual evidence and not all the innuendo, not all the hearsay and the rumors out there, but look at the facts. There's too many questions that remain unanswered if you go with this simplistic theory that John killed Anna Mae. It leaves, for instance, the first FBI-led autopsy, where Anna Mae was uh, apparently uh, deceased from exposure and then buried unidentified as Jane Doe and her hands cut off and sent to Washington, D.C., as if there was certainly the appearance of a cover-up. John had nothing to do with that. That was the FBI's autopsy. If you look at the history of what's happened with the FBI and the American Indian Movement, you'll see a history of where people did not get fair trials and where the government used knowingly false evidence and affidavits in the process of, for instance, extraditing someone from Canada. So if they've done it before in directly related cases, we have no reason to, uh, to believe they won't do it again with respect to John. If Grimm is being railroaded, Lien says it's not the first time it has happened in Canada. He's talking about the Leonard Peltier extradition. The U.S. Marshal's office in Western Washington. Justice for all. Uh, I have not received that. He has always maintained his innocence. Uh, Many says the evidence used to extradite him back to the U.S. was controversial. Even the woman who fingered him tried to recant her statement. Myrtle Porbear says she was coerced by the FBI to sign this affidavit. Leonard Peltier is now serving 28 years of two consecutive life sentences for the killings of the two FBI agents from the 1975 shootout. I was involved at that time in the arrest of Leonard Peltier and we held him in our jail and we handed him over. I'm sorry that I had any part in, the, in, in, in that whole thing. Bob Newbrook used to be a municipal cop in Hinton, Alberta. He says it was him and his partner who first arrested Peltier at a camp outside of Hinton in 1976. After watching a documentary on Peltier, Newbrook had a change of heart. And at that point, I was glad he was caught and didn't really give it a second thought after that. Um, but since seeing that documentary and the way the U.S. authorities um, concocted a case against Peltier because they had no other, no other evidence. I'm glad I got you out anyway. I was oh, the last signature. He was yeah. the he was <laughs> I don't want to see the same thing happen to John Graham. If he is guilty of murder, let the courts decide that. If he is innocent, let the courts decide that. Newbrook feels strongly about the role he played in sending Peltier to jail. While he says it's wrong he can't correct, he promises that he won't allow it to be repeated. So Bob Newbrook has put up his own money to help cover John Graham's bail. Newbrook is putting his name and his reputation on the line for a man he barely knows.